Hey everyone, it's Bank for Life. Uh, thanks for joining the live stream. I know this is not an old figure, but a figure that's been pretty well reviewed already, but um, Toy Dojo wanted me to send it over. They thought it was actually pretty nifty, uh, and I, I have to agree. How's it going, Slow K DK? Um, I have to agree. This is the TT Hong Lee PF01. So, uh, this is a version of Starscream. This is uh, taken after the T-Beast. If you guys don't know T-Beast, it was... Uh, an artist who did a bunch of renditions of kind of beast versions of um, various Transformers, kind of like in Beast Wars style, but uh, more mechanical and so forth. Um, but here, let's start off with packaging review. We have him in a nice big box. This guy is amazingly big. I didn't realize how big he was until I actually saw uh, Kato's uh, collection review. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty basic box, nothing too amazing. Really nice big image on the front, though. Hey, team man, how's it, how's it going? And then, um, yeah, just the, the picture on the back of his alt mode, which actually is a, a pretty big departure from um, his uh, T, the T-Beast design, and we'll get to that. But let's get this out of the way really quickly before we get into packaging. I mean, the, the rest of the figure, I did want to show off the instructions. The instructions are pretty good. Uh, they're actually quite detailed, English and Chinese. Uh, so they do a pretty good job explaining a lot of this, much better than most instructions. Uh, it's very reminiscent of Gundam instructions, and uh, you'll hear me say that a lot. Uh, I actually had to look up this company, and uh, they apparently do KO uh, Gundams. I think that's where they got started. I don't know if they do any original designs, but uh, that is going to hold true. Like The styling and everything is going to hold true throughout the entire review uh, it does actually come with a bunch of um decals uh, and a little wax paper that came on top to protect it so this is also very gundam-esque uh, i wouldn't be surprised if this is just something that they duplicated from one of their gundam kits and just put you know ttpf01 on it because it's not you know very generic there's no like decepticon symbol or anything like that these are very gundam-esque uh in nature the caution symbols and so forth so with that here he is in packaging. He is quite huge, like I said. Uh, I think he stands almost uh, one foot in height or 12 inches. I think like 28 centimeters or something crazy like that. Let's get him out. And he comes with uh, a ton of accessories. So in addition to the stock head, which I don't really like, um, he comes with two additional heads. We'll look at those. He comes with two null rays that mount to his shoulders. So that's level one of the tray. And then the second level of the tray... Hey, Kados, I actually just referenced you. I said I, yours, yours is the only review of I've looked at this guy. Um, Toy Dojo sent this over because they thought it was cool and they wanted to make sure that I let everybody else know that, that this guy was pretty cool. He also comes with a figure stand with uh, an attachment and two adapters for one for uh, his beast mode and one for his robot mode. But that's not all. We're, we're going. He has two swords, like uh, energy swords. Let's see. Two swords. And then uh, which these pieces here, which look like blast effects, but actually aren't blast effects. Um, well, I guess they could be kind of, but they, I think, are more like beam savers. But we'll get to that in a minute. All right. So, yeah, he comes with uh, a ton of stuff. Let's see if we can get all this kind of on camera at once. All right. All right, so here he is out of packaging. Um, he's not fully in, uh, or at least when I saw him, I don't think he was fully in robot form. Uh, I think there might be some small tweaks, like, for example, he, he has you have to extend his uh, fists. So you have to untab this if they're tabbed in and extend the forearms. Uh, this is one of the things I don't really like, is that it, while you extend this, it doesn't really lock into place. So, oh my gosh, sorry about that. I'm surprised I didn't break this guy. Uh, actually, we're going to move the figure stand off to the side. So, uh, yes, there is die cast in this figure. And we'll talk about that. You can see in the feet is very shiny feet. Those are die cast. I think his heels are also die cast. Um, so he does have a decent amount of die cast. Um, so in addition to his uh, overall stature, the height, um, he also has die cast. He also has a lot of good paint. Um, he has LEDs in his chest and all three of his heads, and all three of them come with batteries, which uh, usually you don't even get batteries on one of the heads, 
Uh, you usually have to install your own, but each individual one has its own set of batteries. So no need to rush out or go to Amazon for that. But let's do a quick 360. So um, overall, I think the design in robot mode is uh, pretty nice. One of the things I'm not sure about is I believe that the knees are supposed to go up, but I've seen them both ways. Um, I prefer them up, but that's just me. But when doing a 360, one of the things I don't like is the fact that I don't know why they have this down like this. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. And it almost perfectly fits in between the wings. Uh, you can kind of just angle them one click out. And it should fit in just nicely. These two halves are supposed to tab in. And they fit kind of nicely uh, in here. So I prefer that. Uh, I think it's still a very clean look, as you can see. But overall, I think he looks really good. Uh, he's not as lanky as the design that T-Beast originally has, but he still looks really nice. And again, the paint work is pretty good. Uh, I've said this already. Gosh, this is one of the big things. His, his joints are really loose. And I know I said that uh, this company is kind of has done knockoff Gundams. Uh, this guy feels like a knockoff. So it feels like this company knocked off the original design of this. So if some other company that we knew... Uh, either Takara Tomy or maybe a, a really well-known third party had made this, and then this company knocked it off, this is how it would feel. Uh, a lot of the joints are really, like, soft. Uh, while it does have ratchets, they're really soft. The knees, as you can see, the joints are really, really loose. And the plastic quality is that kind of KO-ish quality. Slow DK, he goes for 115 bucks, which is probably the... Biggest saving grace is the, the overall quality, while it is kind of KO-ish feeling, for $115. Bucks, um, uh, memo, I didn't actually watch your review, but I think it makes sense. But um, but yeah, he for $115, bucks, I think he's a good deal, given all that you get. And even with like you know some of the weird kind of janky parts of this, he still does look nice. He has really pristine paint applications. The plastic feels a little low quality. The joints feel a little low quality. Um, but overall, he's still a pretty fun figure. So let's get into some of the art, uh, uh, accessories. So you can see his standard head here. There's a switch on the back. You just switch it on. And you might not be able to see this under my lights, but his light, his eyes and his little forehead crest do light up. And you can see here he has a kind of mean-looking stock face. His second face is just kind of straight-faced. And where's the third one? Third one is the required, always necessary, smirking face for Starscream. You can't have a Starscream figure without a smirking alternate face. Okay. All right. So other accessories. We have his null rays. Um, these also extend and contract. Uh, but again, they don't lock out, and they're very loose, so they tend to slide in. Again, feeling very KO-ish in that sense. Even the the nubs here, the you might want to clean some of those up. Some of the finishing touches. Uh, I would have preferred if they kept it a little bit more G1 and let you at least have an option to mount it on the forearms, but there's no option like that here. Okay, um, his swords are really nice. They're translucent pink. And they have a handle with a slot in here. Pretty standard. Uh, but again, this is more Gundam style, the way it's handled. It's not just a, a, a tab. Uh, it's an entire slot through. And again, having built Gundams, um, that's very reminiscent of that, having that full slot through. And then the last accessory, that, aside from the stand, is this kind of blast effect that it only works, as far as I can tell, into the forearm here or the top of the back of the forearm and i guess it's the blast effect you can also think of it maybe as a energy saber that comes out of his hand but i guess he already has two swords so it'd be kind of redundant for this to be an energy saber effect but you get the idea the accessories are the one thing that I would say work really well in terms of tolerances everything else feels kind of loose all right Looking at the stand real quick, it's a nice stand. I mean, it's not uh, it's not crazy thick or crazy sturdy, but it will definitely hold up most of your figures. It mounts in very similar to 
all the other stands that you see out there with this clip and then this adjustable um, peg hole depending on the angle you want. And then coming down here is how you release it and you can extend it, uh, extend it and lock it back into place. And then depending on which mode you have, you're gonna use uh, one of these differing kind of ratchet pieces. So it doesn't ratchet on its own, you have to pull it out and stick it in. But let's see here, this one is for robot mode. It comes right in here and squarely pegs into his hole in his butt. And it does a pretty good job. Like, I know it looks kind of flimsy, but it's actually quite sturdy. And most of the way of wobbliness is from the figure itself as opposed to the, the stand. So that works quite well. I think that's uh, actually a quite, quite a nice stand. Again, um, a lot of stands that you'll see, especially smaller ones, will go for like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And uh, this one's quite large. All right, articulation-wise, his neck is on kind of a weird panel so that you can, I guess, do flying poses with him, which is nice because he is a seeker and he does fly. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, his head is on a ball joint, so it can rock around, tilt, and so forth. Uh, I can go 360. Um, his shoulders are softly ratcheted, even even to the side laterally. Although you do get some kind of inter some interference with the shoulder joint here, so you can't go that far up. You can do the pec deck kind of move. I know. I think Transforms Like a Guitar always asks me to do that. He does have double-jointed elbows. He does have the gorilla arm thing going on in the sense that it bends inward. So you can do this, and you can rotate at the hand here if you'd like. I think that I prefer that look overall. Uh, his wrist is on a ball peg, which goes around. You can hear it being all squeaky. And then his fingers are individually articulated, but uh, this one is on the thumb is on a ball joint. And each individual finger is just curled up. No, aside from the pin at the base of the hand, there's no other articulation on the hands. All right. He does have a bicep swivel. I don't know. I think I might have missed that. Coming to the waist. Uh, this is one of the areas that I'm actually confused about. Because if you open up when we see in transformation, he actually has kind of a pin here and like a slider, what it lo looks like in here. But it doesn't actually work. So it looks like they had planned to do some kind of articulation, but didn't make it work for some reason. But it, it otherwise, I don't know why they would even have this rail. But I haven't been able to figure out how to get it to work. So it looks like it might have had it at some point in design, but it looks like they may have scrapped that. Uh, maybe Memo or Kados in the, in the uh, chat can explain it. Maybe they figured it out. And again, I, I didn't pay too close of attention to um, Kados when he did the articulation. Yeah, the, the T-Man says the waist joint is very similar to um, uh, MP11 and MP3. That's true. A lot of this does take away, take from that design in general. And, and we'll see that when we do transformation. Yeah, that's what, like, at least the Seekers had a little bit of articulation. Like, this one is just, you know, just uh, play. So the Seekers had a little bit going on, but this one I don't think actually does. Anyway, we're, we're I'm rambling. So um, his hip skirts flip up here, a weird style flipping up of hip skirts. He does have ratcheted hips. These are actually the only joints I think are fairly tight as far as um, ratchets going out laterally. He has a thigh swivel. He does have double jointed knees. Uh, his kneecaps that we saw before are on a hinge as well as a ball peg, which can go around. He has die-cast toes and heels, so they can go forward and back. Uh, they can actually tilt, um, like rotate, and then they can tilt because I think it's on a ball peg down here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a ball peg. And he has a pretty decent heel. He has these hip skirt thingies. I don't, I don't really love this design. Um, it kind of reminds me of MP3's kind of samurai scabbard things. And because of the ball, ball peg here, uh, it can't even fold flat on itself. It, it's always slightly opened. Um, I kind of, if I was going to do it, I'd probably keep it open and flared out like that. 
Let's see here. Oh, the wings. We haven't talked about the wings, which is probably the best part about this figure. So it's Ratchet going this way, Ratchet going this way, but they're both way looser than I would like. Um, there's other sections here that are really meant for uh, alt mode, but you can transform the wings like you would for alt mode and get a really gorgeous wingspan. Um, I'm not going to transform it all both sides just for time's sake. But you can see just how massive this is. I think from tip to tip, it might be like 10 inches or maybe even more. So it's really, really wide. You're going to wait for the KO for something that feels like a KO T-Man? I don't know if that's advisable. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that transformed back. Oops, I went the wrong way. That's my fault that it fell off the bag, ball peg. But even these tabs here that hold these in, at least on mine, are not particularly secure. So, again, overall, feels a little cheap, and the tolerances are a little bit wonky. I would have preferred uh, tighter tolerances all around. And when we get into transformation, uh, you'll actually see that there are certain designs that you can... T elements that it seems like this is their first foray into Transformers because they try to do some transformation stuff, but they don't do it well. So uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you more about it when we get there. Um, before we transform him, let's go ahead and do some comparison. Here is G Creations Optimus Primal. This is, uh, the, I think, the first T-Beast figure. I only have one other T-Beast design right now, and that's their uh, Sideswipe. I don't have like the Bumblebee, the Hornet, I think, Bumblebee, and I don't have... Um, any of the, what's it called, the, the Rodimus. I think there are two, or at least two were planned. I think only one came out. So I don't have either of those. Here he is compared to MP44. So he's bigger than MP44. So that's pretty impressive. And then uh, one other last comparison I'll do for robot mode is MP Beast Wars Megatron. And uh, he's a little bit squatted down, but he would be about the same height if I straightened out his legs and everything. So, again, he's a really tall figure. Um, he just doesn't feel substantial, though. Yeah, uh, Ancestrod, who was that? Maddie the Dentist, thanks for that. Uh, Inu Tabby said he has the B and he has two left legs. That's, that's sad. Uh, it sounds like uh, Larkin and Kato have all the TV, so that's good if you need some comparisons. Uh, definitely go ahead and check out their their uh, uh, their reviews. All right, so let's go ahead and get into transformation. Transformation is pretty simple on this guy. Again, as T-Man referenced in the chat, he's very similar to a lot of other Seeker designs, um, the, the MP3, uh, MP11 mold. Um, but yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and just turn the head around, push it back real quick, and then we're gonna pull the cockpit out. Just extend that forward. You'll see that there's a little notch here. Ideally, what you wanna do is get that slotted in like so. Lift this up. Oh, I didn't, I didn't show the LED in the chest. You just lift this up and then I think you pull it down. Uh, where's my spudger? I lost my spudger. Sorry about that. I should have uh, been paying attention. I think it goes down. Does it go up? Oh, it goes up. And then there's a little switch here. And again, even with my bright lights, you can see how bright this one is. Nice and orange. Sorry about that. But yeah, get this up like so. You can see his bird head. I'm going to lift up these sections here, the intakes. And then his head is on the slider. That's the other thing I don't like. Like in robot mode, um, it just slides around, which is gets kind of annoying. All right, so we're going to rotate these in very similar to uh, MP11, MP3. And they tab together. Now we'll deal with the arms. Uh, the arms basically go back the way we had them out of box. So they slide down. There's little tabs on both sides. The tab in. And the instructions say to pull this up, but it's already up. So I actually think it should be going down. It makes way, way more sense for it to go down than it does to go up since it hides the fists. 
and then these collapse on themselves. This actually has a spring-loaded uh, space gap filler. You basically just want to push that in like so. And get that tucked in as high as you can. Same thing on this side. All right. Once you're here, you're going to pull these little things out. And then uh, the actual upper body extends a little bit. So extend that. And then these two halves will slide in. Uh, this mechanism kind of reminds me of... Do you guys remember like that bull's fire... Um, that bull's fire, what's his name, Swoop, the Dinobot. It kind of reminds me of that. I mean, that also took a lot from uh, MP11. But uh, this part flips out and up. The instructions say do, do it this way, but I think it makes more sense to rotate this around. Um, it makes it slip, sit flatter, and then you have some deco here, design here that they put on. Otherwise, I don't even know why they would make that piece rotatable. And that pegs in to that big square that we just created. Oh, this fold this piece. Oh, that was my fault. I should have actually folded this round before. And that kind of covers up the head, sort of, kind of, sort of. And, and that's really the upper half of the body. All right, coming to the legs, um, you want to point the toes. And then this is one of the things, again, that make it feel kind of like a KO. I, I should have talked about it in robot mode. But see how there's a spring-loaded mechanism here? It doesn't line up, at least on, on this copy, it doesn't line up flush with the rest of the shin, which makes it feel kind of cheap, right? Like, anyway, you push this in. And then what this will allow you to do is bring this all the way back and around. And here's one section that I was talking about. They have little indents here and little tabs where, where are the tabs oh um little tabs in here that should lock this into place but they're not tolerant well so it doesn't feel like they even do anything like at all so i think again that shows their rookie uh foray into transformers because they should have tolerances so that it actually does some friction there uh instead of just moving on like that so this piece that we had, you can swing it around on this joint here, and this will peg into the side. And then this piece, you can do whatever you want. I think they would suggest flipping it down. But again, this piece is also really oddly designed. Like, this shape serves no purpose. It doesn't really particularly look good this way. Uh, and when you flip it down, it doesn't <laughs> make a cohesive look. So... Um, yeah, I, I just don't know what the designer was thinking. Uh, maybe there's some alternate way. Like, I guess this even looks a little bit better to me, even though it's hollow. But I'm just blabbing. So, yeah, you go like that, and that's really it for the leg. Same thing on this side. This comes up like so. This flips around. And another thing... So it looks like there's little peg holes here that correspond to this, these pegs on the side, but they're not long enough and you can't actually tab them in there. So both legs just kind of like float on their own. Um, they don't even tab both halves together, uh, as far as I know, unless I, I'm missing something. So again, kind of rookie weird choices in their transformation. Tab that wing into the back. All right, uh, here's uh, another section... So we're going to bring this down, and these are going to flip down, and this will peg in here. But again, pegging is a very loose term, just like these pegs are. Uh, it doesn't actually all peg all that well. Same thing on this side, and you just extend the talons as you might expect. Can't really get it wrong. You just want to straighten them out. And this is where it kind of deviates a lot from the alt mode that T-Beast uh, did. In the T-Beast design, uh, he actually just used these legs, the robot legs, and almost kind of looked like a gear walk mode. Uh, and you can still do that with this. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll show it on the way back. But uh, I think that looks better because now he just has like a whole big, I guess this is supposed to be his tail fin, uh, his tail feathers or something like that. But that's just, most of the mass is back here. It makes no sense to me. So yeah. Um, and then we will tr we'll transform the wing. So we extend this around, flip this 
these feathers will flip out and this piece will come down and around. Oh, I'm, that's my mistake again. I should have went the other way. That's why this ball joint, the, the ball joint's really not the design's fault. That's, that's my fault. I went the wrong way because you have to go over under here as well as tab in straight here. So this will tab in straight and this will do an over under like so. Same thing on the other side. Open this all the way flat. Rotate this around. Bring this down. And once again, I went the wrong way. I keep wanting to rotate it a, a different way than the design. Flip these out. Come on. Okay, there we go. And with that, we have him in bird mode. And I can't even get him fully on screen. Like, that's how massive his wingspan is. Uh, the one downside of having this uh, coldly tabbed in is that you lose articulation at this joint here since it's tabbed in. But you can always loosen it and, and use it however you'd like, but we'll just keep it like that for now. But yeah, it's massive. It looks really cool, at least the wings do. But the rest of it, it really doesn't look cohesive at all. And as I explained throughout the transformation, a lot of the stuff just hangs out loose. And the things that do tab in don't do a particularly good job of it. Like the arms aren't tabbing in really. I mean, the only thing that's holding it is that centerpiece here. It'd be nice if this tabbed in. It'd be nice if the legs tabbed together. Um, it'd be nice if these were a little bit stronger. I don't have a lot of confidence in it when I pose it because the ball joints on the hips are really loose. So again, it feels like a KO of, of a third-party transformer or something. All right, he does have articulation here at the neck. I think that's at one joint here and one joint at the base. He also has this neck joint here and another hinge. His mouth does open. They have a little tab here so you can open it up. And even the bird choice, like this reminds me more of a vulture design. And I don't think it was really meant to be a vulture design by T-Beast. It, it looked a lot more sleek. Uh, the wings are the same articulation, so we won't really go into that, aside from the fact that we can't move here. It does move up. I mean, you can even do some yoga and go all the way around 360. If they said, Oh, actually, not 360. It stops here. So it goes like 270 degrees. It can go all the way up. Um, the legs are on a ball joint, but they're kind of loose. He has a knee bend. He has two joints for kind of the front of the talons and then one joint for the back. These tail feathers here, they move around, and that's it. I also thought that maybe these thrusters could expand and contract, but when I tried to pull it, uh, this piece just falls off. So uh, it is not meant to display like that. Articulation, uh, the figure stand, uh, I believe it comes up. So um, these those pegs that aren't actually used, if you come up here, you'll see these notches cut out. You'll come up and go around the hip joints and those pegs. And once again, you'll just remove this, sec this attachment and att add this one on. So it can look kind of cool, especially on the figure stand, floating around like this. And again, the most impressive part definitely is the wingspan. Let's take this off. Um, is there anything else to really talk about in this mode? I, I, oh, I guess uh, you can put his blasters on his shoulders again. I don't think there's storage for the swords unless, again, I missed that. I, the instructions, I don't believe, talk about that. But again, uh, for this, I would have preferred if they gave you at least an option to peg it in under the wings, kind of seeker uh, jet style. But yeah. And you can't really make use of this anywhere. As far as I can tell, it doesn't plug in here. It doesn't plug into the guns. So, yeah, not a lot to do with the accessories in, in bird mode.
Uh, I don't. I didn't think about doing any comparisons in alt mode. To be perfectly honest, uh, you need to have. Yeah, it does. It is very similar to the uh, three zero or three A stands. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. Very very similar in design. Uh, do I have anything? I have nothing really good to compare him to in in beast mode. Um, I'll bring out streak because I always bring out streak. Even though it makes no sense to do so. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't really plan ahead for that. I never keep my figures in alt mode, so. Hey, Clinical, how's it going? All right, so I've been missing a lot of questions. Uh, I'll pause real quick since we're here before we go back. Uh, Larkin's Lair says the standalone would set you back 15 bucks. I think, yeah, at least 15 bucks for something this size, if not more. Uh, you can pull the bird head out a bit more for a little bit more to go. Oh. oh, yeah. I didn't see that. There's a sliding joint here. Thanks for that, Larkin. This is why we have other reviewers come into the... <laughs> T-Man says, I, I really want this now, he says with extreme sarcasm. Yeah, for the price, Larkin says he's happy with it for the price. And that, that's the thing. I'm giving it a hard time. But again, for 115 bucks, my first impression of this was I think it's worth it. I remember actually messaging uh, T-Man and uh, uh, TM Reviews in our, our Messenger group chat. Uh, immediately that, uh, just upon opening him and feeling him, I was like, oh, geez. But then I transformed him, and then I was like, ah, uh, he feels kind of crappy. So... But in robot mode, I, and with all the accessories and the overall look, like, mine is super sad. Like, I need to do something with these ball joints. <laughs> all right, so, uh, yeah, uh, Memo already showed the mouth opening. Yeah, here's a little tab here. But I didn't know about the sliding joint. Thanks for that. Larkin looking out. All right, so that's really it since I don't have any good alt mode comparisons. Uh, clearly not prepared for the live stream. We'll go ahead and transform him back and we'll finish it off. Uh, oh, uh, actually, you know what? We'll do a little bit of a, a detour. And like I said, we'll do kind of the gear walk mode, which I think actually looks better than the actual uh, official transformation. And again, it's more... It's all oh, great. It's a uh, more "quote unquote" accurate to the um, design that T Beast had. So let's just transform these legs back first. We'll just pull them back on these hinges, collapse that in, like so. We'll just fold them up. They do tab together back here. We'll just fold them up like that, and then you can do with the legs whatever you want. Really, you can just use them like this. And you can give him kind of like the bird, the bird uh, legs, like so. Or you can just straighten them all out like you would for robot mode. It's really up to you, but um, the look is more quote unquote accurate to what T Beast had originally done with his design. I think it looks a little weird doing it like that, so that's why I would probably bird leg the the hind legs. Come on. I'd probably bird leg it a bit or something like that. And again, I think that looks probably honestly a little bit better. And even with the loose knee joints, they're probably going to be better at posing than these really crappy ball joints up here. It has great sh uh, shelf presence in bot mode, but I doubt it'll tr I'll transform it again. Memo, that's uh, a really good point. And I mean, even in bird mode, again, with the figure stand, I think he looks really good as a display piece, but he just doesn't feel very good. And he's not particularly cool or fun to transform. And this is another thing you'll see. There's a lot of like paint transfer that happens on this guy. You'll see some here. Uh, well, you might not be able to see it based on the low resolution of YouTube Live. But there's some paint transfer here. I have some on the arms, on the extending joints. Um, so that's one. That's another thing. Like quality-wise, you'll you feel like some parts just don't feel like you would expect from a third-party company. At least the uh, 
a veteran kind of third party company. But again, for the price and their first outing, I actually don't think this is a bad figure at all. So we're gonna untab this, this big tab here, flip this piece around and down, close that up. We'll extend this out. The head neck panel will come down. Again, if, that, if they stabilize that, that would be better. You can bring the fist down, extend here. Yeah, see, uh, again, you might not be able to see, but there's some blue transfer that's happening. It's, I think it's worse on this side. Yeah, you can definitely see it worse like here and here. And I'm sure you can clean that up, but it'd be nice not to have to worry about that. Extend that forearm piece up and the fist down. Fold this up. Oops. We've got to split the abdomen or kind of obliques and rotate them up and out like so. Bring these down. The bird head will come down. This needs to flip up. This needs to flip down like that. You might want to open this up just for clearance purposes. It'll kind of slot in there. And then you can collapse the whole upper body down. Rotate the head. Here is Starscream as I showed in the thumbnail with the spread out wings. Like if I were going to keep this, uh, I'm not, this is Toy Dojo's copy, but if I were to keep him, um, I would have it displayed like this with his bird wings out in robot mode. I think that that just looks really menacing. It looks really cool, honestly. I'm, I'm a sucker for big wingspans though. Like, uh, who was it? Talon um, from Nero Rex, the Predaking. Like, I, I always loved that he had such a big wingspan. There we go. Um, yeah, and then we'll go ahead and fold these in just to be complete. Untab this. Untab this. This will fold up and down. This has to go to this side. So when you come back around, you do have a peg here. And then a little slot for this tab. There we go. Same thing on this side, we'll pull this out, rotate this around and down. Fold up the wingtips. And get this down and around. And there we go. Oh, see these things also, I thought at first these were going to be like his chest missiles, uh, but they're just loose pieces that don't tab in or lock in or anything like that. But yeah, that's really it for the review. Um, my final thoughts are, again, he feels like a KO, uh, he, but for 115 bucks, I think he's actually still a pretty good deal. Um, and the quality is not terrible. It's definitely not awful. It's not like third-party companies from, you know, five, ten years ago. It feels very much like a Gundam company who's making a Transformer figure that, um, you know, are probably not very well-versed in tolerances for um, joints like this uh, or for ratchets since a, a lot of Gundam figures, most Gundam kits do not have stuff like that. So uh, it's probably a learning experience for them. I have seen more recently that they are doing, you know, smaller figures. I think they showed the Dotsons, um, the Dotson brothers in a small form, uh, non-transforming stat, I think, figures. And those are pretty good too. So while I don't know if I would really, I don't think I could, would recommend this guy unless you really are a collector of the T-Beast line. I don't know if I'd strongly recommend him unless you're a, a big T-Beast fan. Uh, but again, I think for the price, he's he's a good he's a good value. I would say, um, even if he's not like a, a tremendously good figure. Like for reference, I think he's as much as, um, uh, let's see what what fans toys figure came out recently. Their hunk, I think his I think their hunk was like a hundred hundred ten bucks. I don't remember exactly. And this guy's towers over him has way more stuff and accessories, figure stand and stuff. So. Um, for what you get, I think it's not a bad deal at all. Uh, just be aware that it's a first company with its um, feet getting wet in the Transformers uh, fandom. And uh, 
they had they definitely have a ways to go before they're a top tier third party company. Oh, I didn't show the ball joint, uh, but uh, the replacement head it is on a ball joint. Uh, I believe you can just pop it off, um, but you can also unscrew these two screws here. But I'm pretty sure you can just pop it off. But yeah, see, yeah, I did it. I did it before, but I thought it might sound a little too scary to do, uh, so I loosened it when I put it back on. Let me see if I can actually snap it back on without loosening the screws. Yeah, so you can do it. It's a little scarier. I prefer this head the most, the non-smirking one. I think it's the most menacing looking. So yeah, before we sign off, uh, any other comments, questions, things I missed from Larkin or uh, Memo or anybody else? How's it going, Pac? Yeah, I, Larkin's Lair says, hopefully they improve with time. I, I would definitely look forward to seeing some more stuff from them. Um, as long as they can, you know, improve their transformation design, I think um, that's the number one thing. Man, all these people are saying hi to Pack. <laughs> Pack says big wing spans are awesome, but I can always, uh, but I can uh, what? But I can. I don't know what he's saying, but he says I always end up selling the ones that do because they take up so much room. Oh, Kato says his didn't feel ex exceptionally loose. Um, maybe just because I'm a. Uh, a big practicer before I do reviews. I, I probably transformed this guy a half a dozen times or more each direction. So like, you know, 12 times or more. Oh yeah, his are, his are pretty, he said his bird legs are pretty tight, but you could see him on mine. He wouldn't even stand. Uh, you do Tabby says he'll get a sky warp. The picture quality is awesome, really? T-Man says the picture quality is, is awesome. Um, Clinical asks if he can lay an egg. No, he cannot, unfortunately. Yeah, Larkin, he says he's biased because he has everything T-Beast. I really like the designs. Some of them are really, really nice, so I can definitely understand. Hoping to get a bit better plastic and a tad more engineering. Yep, I agree. Yeah, like the, the, the model kit feel of a Gundam and even the styling that they they took that is a departure from the TB's original design, it's very Gundam-esque. So, it, I mean, that has... Good gosh, this guy has fallen, like, especially his right knee. I think he's fallen, like, four times in this review. Um, I mean, that, that just echoes. Like, you can feel that... I mean, this feels more like a model kit, as uh, Larkin said. Um, but it's not a, a terrible feeling. If you guys own Gundams, uh, you know they don't feel like as solid as Transformers figures that they have. The, the plastic's not typically as thick, um, and the tolerances are a little bit looser in a lot of places. So, I mean, it makes sense that this is what the product would be for a Gundam company or, or KO Gundam company trying to do a Transformer for the first time. 150 bucks. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't re recommend this guy at 150 bucks. Like, there's... No way, no how. I would recommend them 150 bucks. Hey, Ant Anton, how's it going? All right, so I think that's it. I think we kept it short. Uh, there's not a lot to, there's not a lot on, uh, to say about this guy. I don't think there's a there was huge interest 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 in this, um, and it wasn't on many people's radars, including my own. So I think this is a good opportunity to hopefully. Get this in front of a couple of people who may not have known about it um, and give them opinion. Who made the best T-Beast? Uh, you might have to ask Larkin here because he said he owns them all. Um, I am... All of them feel kind of loose. You know, honestly, my my uh, G Creations op Optimal Optimus Primal, like some of his joints are really loose too. Like these are really soft. His hip joints really loose. So... Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, maybe TB's designs. Maybe they're they're designed to be a little bit looser. The sideswipe feels really good, though. I think he feels really nice. I think he reminds me a lot of the MP one, uh, except he. I don't know if he has diecast. 
But yeah, I like this figure a lot. I think the I think he's probably my favorite of the bunch. I don't like Ancestrod. Um, I was waiting for the other company who was doing him, but I don't even think he, they ever released him. Uh, the Hornet. Hornet is from Transform Element, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, yeah, and I don't have that one. The new Albino Primal is a lot better. Yeah, I would expect so. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they picked it up. They would step it up a bit. Yeah, Pac was right on the mark. He said, my guess is Generation Toy Red Bull is the best. Your feet are lighter blue than mine? It could just be the lighting, but yeah, I mean, it is pretty light. All right, so I think that's it for today. Uh, the next figure I will be reviewing, and I probably will do it Sunday uh, because I'm so backed up on uh, reviews. I need to start pumping some out. Uh, I'll give you guys a preview. He's going to be a lot harder to review, but this is uh, G Creation's Wrath, their movie Dinobot. Uh, sorry, uh, Grimlock. Oh, he is a Dinobot, too. And his little Optimus Prime that rides on him. Uh, this guy is pretty cool. Definitely has a movie figure feel to him in the sense that the transformation is kind of crazy and weird. Um, and it has kind of the very same similar design uh, elements that some of the other figures had, like um, the Opti Last Night Optimus. What company made that? Unique Toys? Was it Unique Toys? Uh, but yeah, it has, has a lot. Hey, Deluxe, how's it going? You came in right at the end. Yeah, Wrath looks sweet. Uh, he has a lot of cool paint and weathering, uh, and he is super beefy. Like, he's really heavy, and he looks great. So he will be my next live stream review. Um, keep an eye out for it. It will probably be, be on Sunday night since we have a holiday on Monday, so I don't have to get up early for work on Monday. Uh, did you pre-order Fans Toys Blitzwing, by the way? Uh, I don't think Blitzwing pre-orders are up yet, but I get all the Fans Toys stuff. <laughs> Deluxe says, you, <laughs> Peg, you make me want to be a better man. You know what, Deluxe? You make me want to be a better reviewer every time you're in here. I'm always like, man, I gotta be more on the ball. Like, actually do reviews more often. T-Man and TM always give me a hard time because I'm always super lazy. I always had big plans but uh, small uh, actual motivation. Uh, aside from that, I think the other figure that I'll do, uh, I still need to do a Sovereign Redux review. I said I will do that for a while. I also said I'd do the Tactics Waistcoat Deluxe version that I got, uh, I think, like a month and a half or two months ago now, but I never got around to. So there's a lot on my plate. So keep tuning in. I'll keep doing them. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Hope you have a good one.